Hello and welcome to Infinity. In the previous video in this series on colour theory and the practical uses of it, we looked at the colour wheel, the primary, secondary and tertiary colours, and how we could estimate the colour by looking at them and comparing them with these around here, if you can remember where they are, which isn't too difficult. When we look at any one of these, where we were was that in any colour that we've looked at so far, One's been at zero, another's been at the right at the top, and another one's been in the middle. You can see this in any of these here. And this is because these are saturated colours, which is what you get when you've got the full range being used. If you reduce that, bring up the bottom, bring down the top, then things are going to change, and that's what we're going to look at now. So here we have a red which is in the middle there, a green at the bottom and a blue somewhere higher up. This represents one pixel and if we can create that on a rectangle here we can click on that and change the colours up here. So we'll put blue somewhere up there, green a bit down here and red somewhere like this. And what we're getting here is a kind of violet colour but not as bright as if you had the colours fully up. So if I took the the green down there and the red up there, you can see that's a stronger colour because it's more saturated. We can understand this by looking at what is the maximum, what is the minimum. And usefully sometimes looking at the middle value as well for the hue. So what we get with this when we divide things up this way is that at the top here, the bigger that gap is, the more the darker the colour, the more there is blackness in it. So you can do this by taking this here and bringing the, that one down there. So it's similar layout to these three here, but just with the top being pulled down. And you can see you're getting a darker colour. If you move them all down, but, but still with the maximum coming down further, it gets darker still. So that gap up here which is this gap, the bigger the gap is, the more black or the more dark it becomes. The same is true of the other end of whiteness. If I pull these up, they don't have to be at the end stops, but, but in the same kind of proportion, then we're going to get a lighter colour. This is lighter, for us, so the whiteness now is increasing because you've got a bigger gap up to the bottom one. And also what you have is in between here two things. You have hue and you have saturation. Hue is kind of the same as when we had it sort of stretched right to the top and the bottom because the proportions are effectively the same. So we got a violet there because the red was in the middle, the blue was at the top and the green was minimum. So we had effectively, if this range here, if this was like 0 to 100% of this gap, then you'd have no green 100% max there in blue and 50% or thereabouts on the red to give you this but because it's pushed up and it's pushed down then we've got a bit of black in it and a bit of white in it and this is what the saturation is because this gap here determines how saturated it is so let's have a look with this so if I bring this down to something as it was before and now start pulling in the edges you can pull in the top and the bottom, it becomes more grey, becomes less saturated. You can see as you gradually pull that in until they're all pretty much the same value and you this becomes grey. And that is when that gap there, that saturation gap, is collapsed to zero. So by the arrangement of these we get the hue and by the gap here we got the saturation. And how dark it is, the gap at the top, and how white it is, the gap at the bottom. There's something else we can do here as well and we're just going to turn off the mid here just to make things a little bit clearer otherwise you can have too many lines. And the first thing we do is we divide this into three that between the minimum and the maximum and that's to see where this middle one goes and if it is here at the bottom so it's in this gap here, which is approximately a third of the way down. So we pull this down here. 
then if we had the again we put this to the where was it the green at the bottom and the reds in the middle and we pull the red down it goes towards blue it becomes bluer it may still look a bit purple but this is to do as much with the eye and the, and the more power that red has over blue but that's the effect you're going to get so if you see that we're getting in here something becoming more blue then it means that the middle color here is getting less we can go then down to the next one which is tertiary which means if we increase the red up to the middle value here somewhere so here we start bringing the red up to around the middle between the but in the middle between the the bottom and the top the minimum and the maximum then we're getting more to the traditional tertiary color which is a color which is violet here and if we go further up here then this gets closer to the red and the blue at similar levels so with this if we bring the red up here we're getting more towards a secondary colour, in this case it's a magenta. So now we can see we look at the maximum and the minimum to give you the blackness and the whiteness and the middle one which zone it is whether it's a primary, secondary or tertiary colour there. So this gives you information you can use to guess colours and we're going to look at a bit further of that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.